Hello! Today we're going to be looking at a program called BAT. You, most of you are probably familiar with CAT, which lets you concatenate or print out to the screen a file. BAT is basically CAT, but with some extra features like color coding. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. If you're on a Debian-based system, you can sudo apt install BAT. I've already done that, so I'm not going to do this. Once you have it installed, you would think you type in BAT, which is the normal way of doing it. I'm assuming there's another program called BAT on, in the Debian repositories because in Debian you have to do BAT cat. Of course, you can always alias it. So if I type in BAT here, it's going to say command not found. BAT cat, it's going to wait for a file, which I haven't given it. But I can always alias BAT equals BAT cat. And I can put that in my bash RC or Z shell RC file. And now I can BAT and use it just like cat. So let's go ahead and use it. I'm in a folder here with a bunch of little projects I've been working on. So here we can look at them. And here we have the readme file. So if I cat this out, I say readme cat, you can see what it looks like. There's not much inside this readme file, so it's probably not a great example. <laughs> uh, let's actually look at the in, uh, bin install. So if I cat bin install, you can see what that file looks like. And it's a bash script. But if I now say bat or bat cat, depending on how you have it set up, I can say uh, bin install and hit enter and you can see it's now color coded. I can scroll through it much like less or more and um, And they have line numbers as well. Let's look at some other formats So I have files in here. Let's go into my C folder in here. I have some C code. So I will bat Color dot C and here we go. It's color coding. I can scroll through this file. It's a basic little C file Hit Q to get out of that. Let's look at another file. Let's go donut I can now bat the donut.c, or sorry, that was cat, pat the donut.c, and now I can scroll through this file. Nicely color coded. So definitely, as you're editing code, you know that color coding, high, syntax, syntax highlighting is very important because it lets you see when you made a mistake when you don't realize it. But it's also sometimes nice just to be able to display it out like this. Uh, let's look at another example. Let's look at some JavaScript. Okay. And the JavaScript is in the JavaScript folder here. Okay. Oh, jQuery. Oh, this is the minified one. I don't know. I don't know how this is going to look. Let's have a look at this. Well, it's highlighting it, but it's minified, so it's not formatted properly. There are scripts and programs to do that. Uh, but let's look at some PHP. Let me bat out the index.php. There we go. We got some JavaScript in there, some HTML in there, and everything's nicely color coded. Again, numbered by line. Um, let's look at one more example. What other languages do I have in here? HTML, we kind of look at the HTML. Let's look at assembly. I haven't done much work in assembly, but I have a few little codes here, a little bootloader that uh, displays out uh, information lets you type. So let's bat that out. I haven't tried this, let's see what it looks like. Look at that highlighting for the assembly code. And let's cut out the readme in this. I think I based this on someone else's code. Oh no, still notes that I just put, which is actually, that's just basically a shell script there. But let's go ahead and bat it out. A eh, little bit of highlighting there, the commented outline. It is going based on the extension of the file. If I bat or bat cat, depending on how you had set it up, and do dash capital L, it will give you a list of programming languages that it knows. And then, for example, like Python here, it will tell you what extensions it will look for for highlighting like that. Uh, something I have not looked into, but for example, here, CyberGriffin, the video game I've been working on for the last month and a half or so. Uh, I can go in here, I can go into the resource, or actually the source code scripts. So in here I have some GD script, which is... Uh, Godot script, which is similar to Python, but it's not Python. I can cut out one of these, like the enemies. Yeah, enemy.gd. So this is what the code looks like, just catting it out. If I bat it out, it's going to basically do the same thing with line numbers. It's not going to highlight it all because it doesn't recognize that extension. Uh, I'm sure that you can probably tell us, look at that, but you can also tell it dash lowercase l and the programming language name. In this case, I'll do Python. Again, this is not Python, but it's similar enough. Let's see how it looks. We've got some highlighting, not quite right. 
uh, there might be better options out there. Maybe someone has made some sort of plugin for Godot script. Uh, this is something I'd have to look into more, but it does, it tries to highlight it, but you would think that the var for variables would be highlighted one color and the actual variables would be a different color, but it's trying based on Python script. Um, and there might be a language out there that highlights better for this. So yeah, that's it. Definitely check out the man file. There's gonna be a lot more information on there. Also looking at their uh, GitHub page, they support many, many, let me bring this over here. There we go. Many, many, it looks like they're in the, the package manager for all these distributions, like Chocolatey, so it runs on Windows, like most things open source do run across the platform. Uh, Fedora, um, we had some BSDs in here, but also I noticed that it says Termux, so you can install this easily on your Android devices, which what might be nice as well. Anyway. That's it. I thank you for watching. As always, I hope that you have a great day. Visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. And I hope that you have a great day.